council and council. <laughs> thank you so much for all that you do. I just want to send a thank you in your direction and in your direction uh, before I pray. Lord, we thank you for your help and strength and thank you for this great city full of great people. And Lord, we ask that you would guide us. We pray for strength and protection for all those who serve us. We give you the glory. Amen. Thank you. All right, Councilman Blevins. Here. Councilman Schlack. Present. Councilman Valerius is asked to be excused. Councilman Sight. Present. Councilman Lloyd. Present. Pro Tem Raleigh. Yes. And Mayor McLeod. Here. We have a quorum, Madam Mayor. Um, we have correction or approval of the agenda. And I have a motion. Motion, Mayor. Second by Mr. Lloyd. Second. Second by Mr. Raleigh. Any changes? Out to the chair. Uh, I would ask that we move the parade permit um, into resolutions. Motion, Madam Mayor. Motion by Mr. Black. Second. Second by Mr. Lloyd. Are there any corrections? There are none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Organizational business. The administrator, the county jail is going to serve up there. That's okay. Good evening, Mayor Council. Uh, Resident Allen Al Park, and very good to see everybody in person. See how long that'll last and uh, go from that point. Uh, just a, a few updates. Um, usually, I mention how many pages. Councilman Valerius laughs at me. He's not here to laugh at me. Five pages tonight, so I know you're all laughing behind me. So. <laughs> <laughs> you were me. You were me. Uh, Allen Road uh, that remains closed at the Course Creek until approximately the end of the year, while Wayne County replaces that bridge. Uh, we did have a meeting with. Uh, they are starting to make some progress in there, uh, some significant progress. And we have had a meeting with them uh, via Zoom a couple, about a week and a half ago, I guess it was, in the end of September or first of uh, October. And um, it seemed like we just, it's been three weeks since I've seen you last on, on Zoom as well, so we've had a lot of, lot of activity mm -hmm. there. Uh, they notified us that they are going to try to be able to open up two lanes of traffic once they get to that point. So they are working from the east to the west. So this would be from the old garden center area and the pump station to the Thunderbolt side. As, uh, as you know, there was some delay in that project. The Thunderbolt side of the project, there was a uh, VTE um, vault that was found. It has 24,000 volts of power going through it. Um, it has uh, two of those three phases are the main phases that feed the city of Allen Park, and uh, those need to be uh, relocated. They're going to first try to relocate them via um, underground boring, and if that doesn't work, then they'll uh, go ahead and remove them and do them overhead. Um, the time frame for them to finish that project, um, I misheard. I thought he said the first of November, but it's actually the end of November. And so that is uh, why there could be some delay in getting everything moved over. So there's a, there's a good possibility that if the weather changes, we may get the two lanes open and that's all we get. They may finish the project in the spring. But, and, and I think from the chief fire chief's perspective is, you know, he's not here to speak, but I know his stance from before, that's a very concerning aspect of that road not being open, um, especially with Thunderbolt being right there and the residents up on the main street and the uh, 4,000 Allen Road property as well. Uh, all accessible from other ways, all take longer. So they're very concerning for him. Um, so we're, we're gonna continue to work with them. So we're hoping that they can, uh, the weather's good. Um, we don't need another November storm like we had. Um, the night you guys, I think it was your inauguration night. Mm. Um, if we can go with no snow and probably you know 50, 60 degree weather until the first of the first of January, I think we'd all be happy. 
be able to get that project done. So we'll keep you up to date on that one. If anything changes, I'll send out any, any new notifications on that. For the street improvement millage, that's a GV Cement is our contractor for that. Uh, they have finished the restoration work on Park Avenue and on Robinson Avenue. I drove down uh, uh, Robinson today. It looks really nice. I think they did a really nice job there. I think the residents I've talked to were really happy. And so uh, good to see that. We're now working over on Meyer Avenue. Meyer Avenue is just on the north side of uh, Allen Road here by Varan's Funeral Home. Let me give you a kind of a bearings on that. Um, they have poured the south side of the street between Quant and Allen Road today. Uh, the sidewalks and approaches on the south side of the street between Quant and Arno have already been completed. And uh, those, uh, that roadway should be ready to be opened tomorrow, I'm going to say maybe tomorrow morning, afternoon, because the plan is to start on Thursday removing the north side of the street between Quant and Arno. So uh, those people, very patient. I've talked to a few of them over there as well as I've walked through the project. Are very appreciative that the work is being done, but they're very, uh, they'll be very happy to see the contractors out of the neighborhood uh, as they've had a water main and a street going in. So it's been kind of a, a long time for them coming. But um, I did remind uh, the one lady uh, that they have, you know, in a three year period, I think they had three to three or four or five water main breaks. So they've been disrupted more, a lot. So getting a new water main will be much nicer than uh, three o'clock in the morning, no water from a water main break. It's, uh, um, for street section, uh, Mario Savona is working on that. Uh, he's working right now over on Midway uh, between a Andrews and Cold, and uh, he's also working on uh, the utility repairs. Um, they had a bunch of utility repairs where they did a, a bunch of uh, uh, catch basin rebuilds, so he's working on those, and once we get those done, he'll be back on the street section. I, I have a feeling the weather's really gonna catch up to us here shortly. Um, you know, we got a little bit late start with COVID, and we're trying to get as much in as we can, but I think the weather's going to still get to us, and uh, we'll, some of those projects could be just pushed until the springtime. Uh, that could be like the Norwood project. I mentioned that a number of times. I could see that being moved until the spring. It's just a really big project for that point. Uh, the repaving of Beatrice Avenue between Quant and Arno, uh, that's been delayed. There was a death in uh, the Ells Asphalt family, and uh, we're just waiting for a new date to get uh, sent over to us for that. Um, I talked to Tom. In, a, a, uh, in addition to that project, which is... It's, uh, it goes uh, Southfield Road and then Beatrice is the first street behind the businesses and then Meyer's the next street. Quant, uh, which is the uh, side street in that area, was going to be uh, receive some uh, major sectioning. That's going to wait until the spring. There's just too much going on with uh, Meyer being worked on and uh, Beatrice. And we're just not going to have enough time to get in there and, and really get that project taken care of. So we'll be back in the spring to take care of Quant. Um, again, we're just uh, the timing is the issue. We're trying to get everything in as much as we can, but we're just going to run out of time. So they have, uh, Savone has finished the ramp at the uh, fire station. Uh, if you've been by there, you did it in three it. stages, did a really nice job. Um, it's going to take, uh, a, a, I don't know what you need, one of those uh, cranes with the big ball on it to drop if you're going to try to break that concrete. It is uh, a 10 inches thick and he used a basket of some sort. That's probably more your language. I'm not even too sure. I have no idea. <laughs> But it's, it's the wire baskets, and uh, this thing's not going anywhere. It's, it's going to handle the weight that we, we put on it with the fire trucks. <laughs> also at the fire station, they're still uh, working on the uh, roof replacement. And as you recall, that was a grant that we received from the state of Michigan, 80% funded by the uh, Distressed distress Communities Grant. And uh, they should be wrapping up on that here shortly. Uh, they've been working on that for a couple weeks. And it uh, be nice to have that all finished off. And I know Chief was a little anxious to have both Savone and uh, the roof contractor there at the same time, but it seemed to work out okay on that. Uh, for the water meter replacement program, there have been 1,600 new meters installed to this uh, to this point, and there currently have about 900 appointments uh, waiting to be, uh, that have been scheduled that are just waiting to be uh, for those dates to come about. So they are making some progress even with the COVID uh, situation. Um, they do come in, they are, um, uh, amassed and, uh, and ready to go. They're not going to walk in uh, to the house uh, willy-nilly. They are going to come in prepared and uh, to take those safety precautions. I know Mayor uh, McLeod, you said you had them taken and they did take those precautions there. So uh, if anybody's at, wondering about that, that, that is uh, the uh, PPEs are, are a must for them. Uh, for the DPS facility project, uh, brick, uh, poor brick walls finished the foundations on October 3rd. Uh, GV has a section of the road from the salt dome to the building to finish. Um, the, he's going to be working on that, I believe, late this week, early next week, because they need that uh, that area to be able to stage some more equipment that's coming in. And uh, so um, they'll get that taken care of so we can use that as a staging area. 
Uh, they have about 15% of the sanitary sewers to finish and about 50% of the pond ex uh, excavate uh, to complete his contract. Their subcontractor, Four Brothers, uh, they finished clearing the land on the railroad site uh, for the, of the debris and the trees and uh, so forth. That is on the other side of the Ecorse Creek. So they have to, there's a water line on that side, the sanitary sewers on that line. They have to bore under the creek to come up onto the city, new city uh, DPS property, and then they'll tie everything in from that point. So um, Board Brothers has been uh, one of our uh, contractors in the past. We've been, we've used them as well. They do great work, so we're anxious to get them on, uh, get that taken care of. And again, that'll be for the water and sanitary sewer. The salt dome on that for the site will be delivered November 18th, and we're hoping to have it up and filled and in service by December. Uh, the pad for that has been poured, and uh, it is pretty mammoth. Um, is, if, if weather will allow and safety will allow, I'd probably like to see if anybody would like to go over and take a look at it. We can arrange that. Um, Bob Katie is, is here almost every day. He'd probably be the one to take you on there. I was with him last night, and uh, I'll, it'll lead into the next point here. The, sites, the site, 12 acres, got small real fast. And then when you look at the building itself, it's pretty mammoth. So it, it just it coming all, all coming together to, as, to, as one now. Uh, Wolverine Steel is the contractor doing the building uh, construction. They have about 80% of the building frame up as of today. They will start the roof next, and they should have that uh, mostly completed by the end of this week. Uh, the side framing should start the week of October 19th. And they've also already started some brick uh, building, uh, brick block has already started going as well. So it, it is coming together. It's a ac very active site right now. The electrical contractor is Dave uh, Douglas Electric and they put the sleeves in for all the new lines into the building uh, through the footings and they've trenched for the new phase three that's gonna be provided by DT Energy. So as they were going through putting in foundations, PVC pipe was going in. As they were laying concrete, PVC pipe was going in across the area so we could do um, future projects. One of those future projects is, is a gas, uh, above ground gas facility. So the power is already put over there. Everything that they're gonna need is already put in. So we tried to pre-plan for those futures. We, if they don't come together for five years, so be it. But we wanna make sure we have the, the infrastructure in place to be able to do that. Uh, some really good news here uh, from uh, Parks and Recreation. Uh, park ha uh, work has uh, started on the transformation of Briar Rabbit Park. This is uh, the park that is at the uh, triangular portion of Melbourne and Chatham, just south of Wick Road. Uh, they've removed the equipment and they started the site work today. Uh, they're pouring concrete tomorrow and then that'll take probably around 21 days to cure. Once that does uh, cure, they'll come back in, they'll install the equipment and then they'll immediately put in the safety tiles. This project is gonna have the safety tiles that you have seen at the um, uh, Humpty Dumpty, a little bit thicker, a nice safety uh, aspect. Two and, and a half inches thick. It's pretty thick, yeah, it's, uh, it's a nice material. That's one we also put in for the grant that we were awarded for um, Kennedy, um, Kennedy Park. So it's an a, a, a item that Pat's looking to uh, continue as we go through the parks. Um, I'm gonna work with him over the winter time and they're ADA compliant, so we're going to put together a list of uh, costs for the for the other parks that we were, even the ones we've already done, plus the new parks that we haven't done. I know uh, APCCF is working on some grants in that, but if there's ADA component, we're gonna see if we can have that ready to go, just in case Wayne County CDBG calls and says they have extra money, we can have a project ready to go, we'll have it priced out, ready, and we can submit that, and, and maybe do some more ADA components at the parks that we've already done, such as Millwood, uh, Millwood Rotary, um, I think we've done uh, Champagne, um, Acabella, and uh, projects like that that we can go back in and put these, this material in. It's a really nice material and uh, is a nice safety feature as well. Um, I posted about Humpty Dumpty and I, and I noticed a lot of people are going over there, so it was nice to see. When I was there, it wasn't, they, nobody was there, but it was, the activity seems to be there after, after all. I just have to go at an odd time or time when kids are uh, not napping, I guess, or in school. Uh, the second edition of the Allen Park today should have been delivered. I hear we got some issues. I'll find out what's going on with that. Um, but I'm gathering ideas for new additions. Thank you, Councilman. I'll, I'll get that with the historical as well uh, to get that point out. Um, but if you have any articles that you would like to see, um, Assessing has submitted something today. Uh, some new things that we added in there was the real estate section. Um, wanted to make sure we highlighted that the, the, the sales are going really well here in the city. Um, Pastor Bazio, I know, uh, 
he made a cameo here in the uh, magazine with the uh, uh, Chaplain Corps. Um, so we're trying to go back in and, and really highlight um, the projects we have going on, but we also want to highlight the employees and our, and our commission members. Um, so we'll also try to do a, uh, a snapshot of maybe a commission as they go through and highlight one of the, one of the commissions each quarter as well. Um, be interesting to see what, uh, you know, so people know, you know what uh, festivities does or, or different things. I think we have a lot of good people serving on those commissions. Let's get them a recognition that they rightfully deserve and uh, get the word out that they do good work for us. So um, I think they did a, a, another really nice job, very happy. Uh, department heads, I'm very happy, take this very serious. And I, I start to, I'm starting to see a little bit of an, a trend now that there's gonna be a, a, a challenge as each one wants to try to get a piece, uh, uh, get into the magazine. So now there's gonna be a little competition there. So uh, that's fine, we'll make it all work and we'll get it to, to wow. sent out there. Um, Shred Day uh, will be Saturday, October 24th. Uh, this time we're going to host it at the uh, library. We're actually re making a return visit to the library. I think we've been, uh, we were at the library about three or four years ago. So we returned to the library, uh, enter off of the Champaign Roadside uh, between 9 and 1. They're still going to be open for business, so we don't want to interfere with that. We'll arrange that so we don't interfere with your uh, uh, parking lot pickup delivery system. Uh, there's no charge to have any items shred, uh, but we are going to encourage people to donate items that would be delivered to the Downriver Central Animal Control Shelter. So we're, we're collecting for the animals, and they, there's a list on the web uh, page and on the uh, Facebook page of items, uh, bleach, uh, treats, blankets, um, a kitty litter, I believe, is on there. I'm trying to think on the different things. Oh. Yeah, all kinds of different items. So we, hopefully we can get those, um, those items, and we'll take them over there. They def, def, desperately need them, and it'll be a, a nice event. Hopefully the weather will be beautiful. We've been very fortunate the last few years. And uh, that is also a, a big day. It's the opening of Big Ten football. Um, so we will have the radio on for the, la for the hour of 12 to 1 as Michigan State and Rutgers take each other on at you know, Penice Lansing. Um, so uh, we have, we'll, be, we'll be ready. We'll, we'll have our gear on as we battle it out there as well. <laughs> and then just one last item I don't have listed, but I just want to ma make a mention that the uh, blood drive that was hosted by the American Red, Cl Red Cross at the um, at the Allen Park Community Center on the 25th of September. We had 31 donors give blood. Uh, they had 25 as their projected goal, and they received, and 31 products of life-saving blood were collected. Uh, most importantly, a, uh, a number of well over 70 pa 75 patients' uh, lives have been touched by this drive. So another wonderful job by the uh, residents of Allen Park to participate in this and the uh, hosting by the um, uh, community center. And I know that's a, a big event uh, for the mayor as well. So um, I think I hit everything. I think I've talked long enough, but I'm here to answer any questions. Is, is um, before I ask a question from the left, I want to say, you had mentioned the CDBC and the CHR one not familiar with the leftover money for the long and about that. Can you tell? Yes. So uh, what you're talking about if, we have, if they have extra money. Correct. So, they, they allocate out to each community $20,000 per year. Um, we can then apply for a $100,000 grant. We're, we're guaranteed one $100,000 grant per five-year cycle. We've been fortunate here that uh, we submitted for the elevator at the Palouche Center. Uh, Andy Hill worked on that. I submitted it on, on the, uh, through the city as it has to go through. That was awarded last year for $135,000. Um, this year, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a shot. I'll throw something out there and see what sticks. And the $186,030 stuck for a park at Kennedy subdivision. That was a, by Roger School. Um, in the future, uh, we'll, we'll keep applying for those and see if something does come about. If it doesn't, it's nothing venture, nothing gain, in my opinion. Um, but what I'm what I anticipate is going to happen here is the Wayne County has to spend so much money per year. They have to, they can only have so much money on hand. It was called their 1.5 rule. And every May 1st or May 2nd, they had to have no more than one and a half times the, their allocation on hand. So that means they got to spend money. And the, the, the problem that comes about with the changes they made to the program is they're very, they're now very reliant on communities that are, are May, may not have the staffing levels to produce the projects that are necessary. Um, they are high need communities. 
no doubt they need the, the assistance, but if they don't have the manpower to do the projects, they're, they're, the, the money sits there and that puts the whole program at risk. So I wanna be ready in case they come back and say, hey, such and such community didn't spend all their money or we had to recapture it, we have X amount of dollars available and we're just looking for an application. Do you have a hundred thousand dollar project? So it, it, this may never come to fruition, but I wanna be prepared just in case. So I've asked Pat to sit down with his, uh, his contacts. Let's get some pricing on, on the parks that we, have, uh, that we haven't done, we haven't worked on. And then let's go back and get pricing for safety material for those projects that we have done where they, they need to be more ADA compliant. Now we use a mulch that is ADA compliant. So the mulch that's out front here is the ADA compliant mulch. I don't know about you, but I'm not too sure I could push a baby carriage across it, let alone a wheelchair. And so I think that's when this material we have now is much safer, it's much easier to use. It's very similar to Duda Park, uh, except that in, these, in the case of the, the uh, Bri or, uh, Humpty Dumpty and now Briar Rabbit, is their, their individual square. So if there's a damage done to the square, they can just pull that out and replace it. Replace it. Yeah, so the, it's a little bit different than the, uh, the Duda Park, which is poured in place surface. Yeah, that, so. let me tell you, this one that you're talking about is much, much better than Absolutely. the other one. Because, like you said, you could roll a, a wheelchair around. The one in, uh, on Park Avenue, the Duda Park, that's pretty hard rolling. Yeah, yeah. I know that they, uh, Pat had said that there was some discussion about possibly the, the Kiwanis wanting to change that out, but. Um, put the concrete yeah, on put, it, that's what helps. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not too sure where, that, where that'll go, but uh, that was something I know he, he mentioned before. Hey. Have any questions? I, I do have one for Mark. Um, could the historical house be included in the CVDG? Uh, it, it could be. I'll have to double check to make sure that they meet the criteria. I, that we just want to make sure that they uh, will, will meet the criteria and not cost us more in the projects than, you know, 20000 doesn't go very far, right? But if you now have to include uh, prevailing wages and, and any, anything else additional to historical you want to make sure you're going to still have enough money. So well, I'll, I'll right, but there's a, a few larger projects that need to be. They, they definitely have a few. Larger so projects. if we can um, get them some money, Absolutely. some free money, Absolutely. then that's, that's, that's the uh, so. would be beneficial to all of us. Yeah, I'm still waiting for their list, so I'm hoping that we'll have that here shortly. So. I, th I think so. Yeah. Next, uh, next. I sat through the meeting, and I think that they did make some uh, some really good progress uh, on, on getting a list together for us. I just want to point out that one of the things that in the magazine is I'm very happy. I know we've been trying here. We just haven't been, a, been able to meet in person enough or have the capacity, but the, uh, the high school uh, cheerleaders uh, were on the front page and uh, there was a nice article about the uh, Italy winning the state championship, which I think was one of the, probably the last championships won yeah. by a high school before COVID shut everything down. <laughs> so the timing was, was good for them. I know that they've, uh, they, they work really hard and I'm very happy that we were able to get them on the cover and, uh, and the, uh, the school district uh, also joined us in the magazine um, with a couple pages. I know that they highlighted some of their, their staff and their, count, their electives as well. My understanding for the December, it's a real good possibility that uh, Melnap schools will be in and they're also working on Cabrini as well. If they do include uh, the Melnap school district, uh, then they will likely deliver to all the Melvindo houses as well. Um, I don't see that as a negative, I see it as a complete positive because it's another, you know, uh, let's say 3,000 houses that, that can hear about our businesses here advertising and they can also know what kind of activities we got have going on as well. Absolutely. So there's always a, something positive coming out of that. So um, <coughs> just a real quick highlight, uh, what else do they have here? Hey Mark, I got one question to the mayor. Uh, the, the roof replacement at the fire station, is that, you, that includes the DPS side, right? No, this was, just a, uh, this was just a flat roof portion of the um, fire station. Um, they, we've done the, 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 so part of the fire station is under the dome portion. Uh -huh. That was done a couple of years ago. Uh, this is the flat surface, and I think it's, the, the, it's like three separate locations all at the front of the building. I got another little question. I just want to know uh, what's the, uh, the, the, about the library with those uh, pipes? Are they going to do any facades or anything like that? Or? Yeah, we're, we're still working with, uh, 
uh, Mike, uh, Mark Angelotti from the expert trying to come up with a concept okay. that we think would be something we can present. Um, we're, we're, he's got a temporary location. If you're out and about, he's got it behind the building on May Street. Um, I'm just not certain that the colors are what we're looking for. Um, and then I was with uh, Matt Baker and we're trying to figure out some sort of fencing or some kind of yeah. something decorative to be in front of the that way it doesn't look it's like an octopus out there. I, I, I think I'm going to use the term that Councilwoman uh, Psyche, <laughs> uh, it looks like it's on life support. It does. And, and, I, and I, uh, that's the term that's going to stick with me it's from, a, from now on. It's a strong <laughs> metaphor. Yeah, yeah it's, it's um, I, you know, the, the issue, I, I, I regret that they're on the side of the building. Unfortunately, the, the type of construction you have for that building doesn't really allow for much, much, uh, many oh, options. It's. You know, terrible when, construction when we walked, when we walked for in and you look up at the <laughs> ceiling and now she she had the uh, uh sandy uh blakeney had the lights changed off the led a few years ago from from uh for what her compact fluorescence to uh not even compact for her they were t t probably t2 t12s uh energy hogs to led but you look up and there's there's nothing it's th th they're right there the boxes are on the front of the ceiling because there's no the, it's the it's the it's the ceiling in the in the library and then the roof material, or probably the, the metal, and then the roof on top of it. There is no, you know, no space to do anything with. It was almost so. like it was built to be in Florida, not in Allen Park, because the windows are single pane. They're and they cover the majority of the wind. My daughter. I don't. I don't understand why you would do that in Michigan. <laughs> My daughter did a um, Lego robotics thing, and that was the building we had chose because I was happened to work on a set of project, and so I had a set of plans. And they had to choose a building to update it. And so we learned so much about the library that it's, it's remarkable that, that they would make those kind of choices for Michigan. But Marsh, I was gonna say those parcel A panels are really nice, but they're probably too expensive for us, but I'm sure we could find something similar to cover a majority of that. Like the lower or the up or the higher? Well, you can do both. I mean, you know, it could be very artistic. Yeah. And if you- the one we were, the, the one I, uh, by we, uh, I was out with uh, Matt Baker, and we, we just happened to stop, and the gentleman lives in, Alabama, in uh, Southgate. There you go. And it's the uh, between, it's on Goddard between uh, Reek and Allen Road on the south side of the street, Southgate side. And he has a, a fence that's a really a nice decorative fence. Um, it does come with some cost, and, uh -huh. uh, but it was something that we, we might be able to modify and do something a little bit different because there's some concerns with how it's constructed. But it would be something that you just can can maybe put some decoration into to, to allow for some. Uh, you still got to have airflow. That's the the, the problem. We, you know, we want to block it out. At the same time, we still we still have you know functionality. We need to make sure we get airflow, and we need to be able to get access. I'm sure you could do a layering kind of effect, especially since the building's such mid-century modern. You that lends itself to little rectangles that just like go in front of each so other and just. Fence, the old stockade fence just isn't going to cut it. No, <laughs> no. Nope. Well, you have to work on that along with my art commission. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Council, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Can I have a motion? Motion. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's too quick. Second. Second by Mr. Lloyd. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, public comments. Make a motion. Approve the consent agenda consisting of purchasing actions, claims and accounts, the payroll report, and the finance, which is the finance overview, the budget to actual report, the balance sheet, and the cash flow. Motion. Make a motion. Support. Supported by Mr. Lally, supported by Mr. Blevins. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? A and B is up to us. Um, with regard to licenses and permits that were separated for discussion, um, who would like to open up on that? Um, so talk about, uh, we're now on to permits, Mayor? Permits. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So I guess, Mr. Kibbe, if you wouldn't mind, um, just speaking to the uh, precautions or the changes that we we're going to be making, um, you know, for this parade. Um, yeah, a few, a few changes there. We're very happy to be able to, to present the uh, parade, um, but in order to do so, we, we feel it needs to be, um, have some changes uh, to, to comply with some safety for the, for the uh, participants and the, um, and, and the, uh, the viewers. Um, so we're, we're, we'll hope whoever is uh, watching would, would still follow social distancing guidelines and so forth. Um, but major change is going to be uh, the staging area is going to be between, uh, is going to be on Park Avenue uh, as opposed to Inglewood. It's going to be on Park Avenue between Wick and Leslie. Um, it'll then uh, proceed north from Leslie uh, to, uh, to Philomene to Allen Cross Allen Road to the community center. Um, there will be no candy throwing to the to the children or the adults. Mm -hmm. so, no candy throwing, and um, Santa Claus. There'll be no indoor activities at the community center. So Santa Claus will give, uh, or the mayor will give the key to the city to Santa Claus at the community center outside. They'll be using the showmobile for that event, and. Um, so no, again, no indoor activities, no candy, and a new staging area. Did I miss? Did I miss um, I think that that's. I think that that's the major point. I, I thought we had something from the. the, uh, the so, so in a, in a lot of ways, this is going to be very similar to the bike parade that we did for the Fourth of July, right. in the sense that we're just going to be going down Park Avenue. It's actually a very similar route, and um, afterwards we just disperse and go our separate ways. Okay. Yeah, we think that the the, the staging area is, was one is a major change in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, we just felt that that was a little bit safer um, because of the fact that if, if we do have bands, I hope we do. I don't know what that's what's we we don't have the applications are out now, so I'm, I'm hoping we have some bands. But if the bands are, are are getting dropped off, they'll get dropped off on Wick and Park Avenue. They'll be able to to walk to their location. The bus will be able to proceed down Wick back to Allen Road and then wait for them here at the community center, as opposed to trying to traverse through the neighborhood, uh, Inglewood to Park Avenue to uh, to whatever street, maybe they're going to Champaign back down road. It just becomes a little bit more dangerous. This will be much safer for the uh, for the, the watchers and the participants. And then unfortunately, the candy is just, uh, I think that's a trend you're going to see, at least for, for uh, this period of time, unfortunately. No candy throwing. No candy it. throwing. No, 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 no throwing. No throwing. Chair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just a couple comments on it. Um, at first, uh, once the election is done, if we can put this date and information on the dollar show marquee sign so it's more advertising. Um, number two, no candy, but we need to also, because I, with common sense, but no erasers, no pencils, no, right. yeah, nothing, yeah. nothing, no throwing anything. No, no throwing of anything. No because, anything. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's just trying to be uh, follow within those social uh, guidelines that we just need to make sure that uh, mm -hmm. we're not, you know, contributing to uh, do what we different gotta. contacts and so forth. I think we, you know, that's. I, 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 I don't want to see the parade canceled over some some foolish stuff. It's foolish stuff. So I hope everybody would, you know, would be willing to comply with that. Um, the response we've gotten on the Facebook page, I, you know, I, we we post on the on the on the website, but I can see the interaction on Facebook because you can see the comments and, and the activity it has been very positive. And a different note when we posted the the, uh, the Halloween information, that was the equivalent of a mini uh, posting for Chick Fil A. Um, the activity was unbelievable. I think we had 10,000 uh, 10, interactions within a couple couple within a day or so, two days. Um, so, and it was very positive response. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're always gonna have a negative comment. It, it's just gonna happen. You know, people are behind their keyboard, so they're, they feel free to say what they want. <laughs> There'll be one Grinch, you know. Always. So, but I, the interaction I've seen so far in the, in the parade is very positive. 
And I think it's a, it, it's, I, it's one of my favorite activities that we have. You know, it, it draws out a ton of people. Um, hopefully, it, you know, maybe it'll be uh, nice enough weather, but cold enough that we can bundle up and have a scarf on and we won't have to worry about the mask because we're going to be bundled up anyways. But not too cold. I don't want to be freezing out there. Um, but I think it's uh, some <laughs> other, you know, uh, just be able to host that event is going to be a good, good thing. We're also working on, as uh, mentioned earlier in the, uh, in the, in the uh, workshop uh, session, we're working on having a, D, a DJ or a better announcement. We're going to have some music so we can play some Christmas music starting about 5 o'clock. And then 6 o'clock we'll do the Christmas tree lighting at the, uh, uh, at the historical house. And then at 6.30 the parade will start and we'll be able to announce everybody as they go by, which I think will help. Uh, you know, the people that are at least kind of in that area, who is this? It's kind of hard sometimes to tell, but I think we'll be able to, to be able to present uh, the parade a little bit differently uh, than we have in the past. So some positive changes. True, through the mayor, I'd like to ask you one more question about this. Uh, is the stage going to be, uh, where's this, where are you going to put the stage at? In between, on Inglewood or something? Or? Uh, I haven't gotten with, uh, with Kyle and uh, Pat and uh, Rob just yet. Um, one possibility is that Inglewood is, is, will probably be closed down again like we have in the past. Right. We closed it in Ivor um, to keep the traffic from that area. So a possibility that we may just put it on Inglewood itself. Yeah, because the historical office is right there. Done. Okay. Well, just, one, just one more comment. Um, with the historical house, just to get back with the commission, um, the house itself will be closed off, correct? The house is, will continue to be closed. So okay. Not open to the public. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just, just to clarify that. I make I make a motion to approve. Mr. Lowry? Support. Supported by Mr. Barnes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Now we come to the resolution. Resolution <coughs> for the City of Allen Park's participation in the Wayne County CDBG Urban County Program for program years 2021, 2022, and 2023. Well, we're done. Not long yet. I give uh, Chief LaFon and Doug and Tom Murray a hard time all the time when they have their Doug and Tom show, but today was my show, I guess, so sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> so this here is just a request to participate in the uh, urban uh, program. We've been a member since 1974. Uh, I would recommend a, a continuation of the program. There have been some changes. I'm not very happy with the changes overall because I think we, 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 we utilized the program to the best benefit we could for our residents, but I understand that you know change was necessary. Um, we still have benefited uh, fairly well in that time frame anyways. Um, and I hope to continue, as I mentioned earlier during my report, that you know, if there's opportunities there, we're gonna, we're gonna apply for them. So uh, my request would be to, a uh, recommendation would be to approve, uh, recommend uh, approve membership again for the next uh, three program years, program years 21, 22, and 23. Are there any questions? Hearing none, can I have a motion? Motion. Support. Support by Mr. Lloyd. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome to council comments for this evening. Um, Ian gets to be first. All right. Um, so it, it was I'm trying to position my mic here. I, I, I'm out of practice with positioning my mic. Um, so I was at, uh, I, and I have to apologize to my fellow electeds. Um, it was kind of a last minute thing, but our government teacher asked me to come in and uh, talk to the class because they're covering city government. Um, I, I got the head start on you guys because I'm about 30 feet away from him, so I apologize. Um, I'm sure that that opportunity for any of you guys would be open to do that as well if you would like to speak to him. Uh, but one of the questions that I got, and, I, and I, I just, I felt like I've been thinking about it, and so I felt like I just needed to, to speak this, is um, about the, the conversation that has been going on across the nation due to election security. And the question specifically was, is do I feel confident that the election in Allen Park will be um, secure and fair? And I just feel I need to say this, that absolutely, absolutely that I feel that way. And the reason that I feel that way is um, we have an amazing city clerk, uh, Mr. Mizzy, who has been doing this for a number of years. 
Um, I actually, I, it has to be over 15 at this point, Mr. Mizzy, is that correct? Over 20. Over 20. I, I actually, when I was in high school, I volunteered to help Mr. Mizzy with a poll. So um, that was, I was on the other side of that um, uh, not so long ago. Um, and the, the, the metaphor that came to my mind is, is um, that, that secre um, city clerks and, and county clerks and secretaries of states, they're, they're kind of like Christmas elves in the sense that they work year round to prepare for one really big day and they work and they work and they work and then the day comes and they bust their butt and they get through it and the next day they start thinking about the next election. Um, and um, I know that uh, I have absolutely, absolute faith in um, Clerk Mizzy and in the work and the dedication that he puts in with his team to make sure that we have a fair and safe election and we count all the votes here in Allen Park. And I, and I actually, I, I very much, and I think that Mr. Mizzy would support this, that he is um, very much the rule and it's not the exception, that we have a, the, the vast majority of the people around the nation, these clerks and secretaries of state, um, they, they are dedicated to the democratic process and making sure that every vote gets counted. Um, so I just, I felt like it's necessary to say that I, I very much feel that the, the people of Allen Park, that their votes will be counted um, that they that they will have the opportunity to express their um, their democratic um, the rights and responsibilities as citizens, um, and I, I do also I mean, we're still a couple weeks away, but encourage everybody to vote vote early if if you're able to you're able to come in and and, and vote get that get those um, absentee ballots dropped off, um, and you know I'll, I'll thank them again next time. But Mr. Mizzy, thank you very much for all the work that you do in making sure that we have. Um, that this democratic process is something that's absolutely essential to a, um, a Republican form of government and I'm very much appreciative of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lloyd. Okay, uh, Jack, okay. well, I only have a little bit to talk about tonight. So first of all, I would like to uh, say to those, uh, as the mayor pointed out, our bill, oh, or she will be pointing out, I don't want to steal too much of her thunder, but to those uh, suffering through uh, breast cancer right now, um, remember not to give up hope because hope is the thing that uh, keeps us all going. And after that, I would like to say happy anniversary to my husband. Saturday, we will have been married 28 years. God bless. So thank you. Rich, I love you. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. I'll keep it short and sweet uh, that I definitely agree with my colleague that I have no fear that our election will be in any danger, that we will be able to exercise our right to vote and definitely encourage early voting. Uh, so get in there, get voting. And as always, wear your protective gear. We are still in this pandemic. Uh, I know it seems like it's been forever since we've been here, and, uh, but it's nice to see all my colleagues here and those citizens that are in the audience here to actually come to chamber. It's uh, sometimes when you're on Zoom call, you are trying to do your best to pay attention, but you, other than slipping your mind, when, especially me when I hear my little toddler running downstairs driving my wife crazy. But with that being said, I look uh, definitely vote early, vote uh, often, as the old saying is in Chicago. <laughs> uh, no. But other than that, I will see everyone in two weeks. And if you can, I encourage you to participate in the Christmas parade. It's a great event and a great way to have a little fun before definitely that uh, stuff that we don't want, where most of us, I can't speak for everyone because I know if uh, Councilman Polaris was here, he would be in favor of the weather. <laughs> so with that, I will see you in two weeks. Thank you. Um, first off, uh, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, wearing all lovely pink. Um, three weeks until election, 21 days. Um, I totally agree with uh, colleagues about our election and every vote will be counted. I've worked it for 10 years at its precinct um, as well with the absentee votes and stuff and they all do get counted and everything and we have a great process with it. Um, especially a wonderful job with the city clerk. And when you go out to vote, if you, work, you vote the day of, please be patient as well as be respectful to the workers 
because they take the whole day to make sure that each ballot is cast and making sure that, especially with this year, making sure everything's sanitized and it's good. It might take a few more seconds to get you cast, but please make sure you be respectful to those who are just trying, they're just there to make sure that you get your vote in. They don't, personally me, when I did it, didn't care who you, what and stuff, they just want to help you to make sure your voice is heard that day. Um, uh, great job again with the uh, second edition with the City Magazine. Um, hopefully everyone gets it, um, again, mailing and stuff. If not, they might have copies at City Hall um, to get a copy as well if needed. Um, last Sunday, if you haven't noticed, um, or the, the two days ago, but uh, Sundays of October, if you haven't noticed, in Park Avenue by the Elks Club, there's gonna be jack-o'-lanterns all everywhere like how we've always had. Even though they won't be having the event, we're still trying to keep that um, festive of Halloween out with the jack-o'-lanterns. If anyone is out there on Sundays at night, around 9.30, if you don't have anything going on, um, we they always need volunteers to help pick up pumpkins. You get the chance to go behind the scenes of Greenfield Village where we pick them up and um, if you, uh, just need some more support. We had a good turnout this last Sunday and I want to thank them personally for those. And if you have a pickup truck or a trailer, it's always wonderful to help out. Um, probably took a couple, just a couple hours, but it's uh, good times and memories to make throughout um, this uh, holiday season. And I want to say good job to, I want to say it was our treasurer who decorated the city, outside of City Hall with all the um, decorations. Again, keeping Allen Park with um, festive. And I want to make sure we keep having more of that um, during this year. Um, I want to say great job to um, throughout this year with the keeping doing cop on the block. Um, always a great turnout and. Uh, I'm not sure if there's going to be more this year, but there, yes, uh, it's, but um, just uh, keep in, uh, make sure you're checking the Facebook page. They, they do a fantastic job on that and to get involved with more events. Um, lastly, uh, just uh, stay positive, uh, go Jags, and uh, I yield my comments. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Uh, a matter of fact, I'm going to take you up on on, uh, on uh, pumpkins. I used to do that, and then I just kind of got away from it. Uh, I want to really would like. I would have seen. Uh, I would like to have the chief give an update on the uh, honor guard uh, training, and I'm pretty sure they're going to have more fundraisers for that. But he's, I guess he's going to say something. I do have a, on behalf of the American Legion, Department of Michigan Veterans Affairs Rehabilitation Committee, they have 40 pounds of food boxes distribu distribution for the veterans, seniors, and families in need of food. The, it will be Friday, October the 23rd, that's the day before uh, we call Shred Day, uh, and 11, 11 a.m to 1 p.m. or until gone. American Legion Post 409, 6737 on road. It'll be in the bark. This is partnership with the Gleamers Community Food Bank. There will be 500 boxes of 40 pound boxes to, to distribution. So what we're, the reason we're asking this because we need some volunteers. This is a community affair. And I was hoping that some of the, uh, the council people here and the mayor might just show their, show their and uh, see if you could help out on that. That's one of them. Uh, I just want to thank, I'd be remiss if I don't thank Jennifer Kibbe for a great job to keep the business in Ellen Park growing again. Thank you, Jennifer. Very nice. I thank all the employees in Ellen Park for doing a good job. You can see the difference as you go down the street. And last but not least, 
the fire and police department. They are excellent people, and thanks to what they do. Thank you very much. Other than that, I don't think every, everything was said. And thank God that we are in a free country where we could go vote. God bless America. Okay, I'd like to thank all the council people. Dan, your your father, he he, you have no idea how much faith he had in, in me, and it means a lot that you do too. He always would call me around election time, see how I was doing. See, it, it, he is sorely missed. Um, God bless him. But. Um, <clears throat> I know a lot of people think we've been short of some election information out there. Um, there because of COVID, you, you never knew what was going to happen the next day. I truly believe that. And I, the last thing I wanted to do was give out any wrong information. So I'm going to be doing this meeting and the last meeting, a lot of information blasts. Um, two things I do as a head election official, um, I make sure is key is make sure everybody who's qualified has the opportunity to vote a ballot here in Allen Park. And unfortunately, this is one of them, but it's, it's a big part, especially at these big elections, is keeping the city of Allen Park out of any litigation whatsoever, okay? It, I've always learned that I have to do what's right for the city and its people, regardless of what I believe or what I don't believe. It means nothing. It's what keeps us out of any litigation or having any liability. Um, with that, I, I like how Mr. Lloyd touched down on security. I've always been a fan of the phrase, believe nothing of what you hear and half of that, what you actually see. I know you're seeing a lot on the news about they don't count ballots here, they don't th do this here. I want to reiterate, Michigan is light years and has been ahead of the majority of any state in this fine union. For 50 years, Michigan has been known as one of the most election secure states in the whole country. After 2000, when there was a confusion between uh, Mr. Gore and Mr. Bush, when a bunch of states had to change their election laws, majority of those states came straight to Michigan to see what we were doing because they knew we did it right and we do it right. So if you hear about something weird, please don't hesitate to call my office or contact the state of Michigan or Google it in Michigan election laws. It's, it's never been easier. When I first started doing the election process, I had stacks of books that I had to go through and look up. Now you could Google what is the laws regarding this in Michigan and elections. It's, we're, we're at a beautiful age. Um, don't want to be long-winded. I'll be coming back at the next council meeting before the election, but I just want to let you know, absentee ballots are still available and there is plenty of time, plenty of time. So please don't hesitate to come in, download an app, and, and this is a new one for me. Take a pic of your application and email it to me. When, when I first started getting them this year, I was like, what is this? It's very odd. But it's the new norm. We're there with technology. I, I'm comfortable. All these new laws, I'm comfortable with. I was a little sketchy, but we're there with technology. So please don't doubt any of it. And I want to assure anyone, everyone, that all the polling locations will be open. Okay? However, if you did get an absentee ballot and you want to go to the polls, please make sure you take that ballot and surrender it to the workers, okay? Don't leave it at home because we can't allow for two ballots to be out there. 
So if you got an absentee ballot and you don't want to vote it, either surrender it in the clerk's office early or bring it to you with the polls to surrender it, okay? Because again, we can't allow a ballot to be out there and you to come into the polls. So um, with that, I'll, I'll end it. And again, I will be back with more information. Thank you all for coming out. God bless you and good night. in the News Herald, and I know you're probably going to talk about that again at our next meeting, but why don't you do it now also about the Saturday and Sunday that you're going to be open? Oh, shoot, I forgot the hours. Um, I, 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 one of them was just briefly then. So Saturday um, we will be open, and I, because I rotate the hours depending on the election. Um, the Saturday and Sunday before the election for anybody to drop their ballots off or come in and if you have something come up or you really get a little weirded out about going to the polls, you can fill out an absentee ballot. Again, I believe, and again, I have ads in the pay, I will have ads in the paper with a definite, but I believe it's the Saturday before the 31st from nine to three and then Sunday, 12 to two. So we are open on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday and Thank you, Mayor. We will be, I will be doing more of a push closer to the election, so. No, thank Well, and this has been unique, because most people, go, we have a lot of people who used to go out of town, but really nobody's <laughs> going anywhere. So they're like, yeah, I got an absentee ballot, but I'm not leaving, can I still vote it? By all means, yes. You know, so thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, due respect. Uh, I'd be remiss if I don't wish my wife a happy 49th anniversary. I'm glad that you did that too. <laughs> Maria, happy anniversary. <laughs> and, my, and my birthday is the 16th. And, uh, 39 years old still. Okay. okay. Well, um, I had a few comments here. Uh, it's nice to see live people, <laughs> even though it's not a lot. Uh, unfortunately, we may be forced to go back to the, the Zoom meetings, and I would hope that more people could participating, participate in that. As far as Allen Park, we are doing well as a COVID uh, statistics. Um, I haven't gotten any email tonight as far as the update from Wayne County, but we currently only have 421 confirmed cases and uh, through, through yesterday, and 33 uh, who have passed away. Uh, and those have been very sporadic. Um, uh, and um, knock on wood, I like to see long spans of time between hearing any more from, from that. Um, as has been pointed out, I'll get back to this. We we're talking about cop on the block. They're, they added a cop on the block tomorrow. It's gonna be at 6 p.m. on Rose Avenue. Um, it is on the police department's website, and if some, if I can pull up, not my phone, but my um, calendar, it's going to be at 15616 Rose Avenue. If anybody happens to see this in time, or you can pass it along to friends. There, they also have scheduled another one for October 21st. Uh, the time it will be 6 p.m. as usual, but the place is to be determined. It occurred to me, because this happens over and over again, and I need to make a note to myself not to forget, in these times, we always talk about being thankful for our police and fire, and we surely are um, all of the time, 365. Um, and with what we've been going through recently, even more so particularly, um, the fire department, which was a true leader and, and getting us prepared and, and getting through this COVID as, as well as we have in protecting our employees. But it has been pointed out periodically, and I will make a note so I never forget, we also need to remember our DPS employees because these are the men and women who when you have a sewer break or a water main break at 3 a.m. in the morning and it's 15 degrees below zero, they're the ones that are out there 
sloughing around in the mud and the water and the freezing cold, going down into trenches, and sometimes risking their lives too. Um, even taking down a tree, something can go amiss with a branch. And so I think it's very important that when we talk about our police and fire, we remember our DPS workers too, because they uh, are an invaluable asset to this city. Getting um, onto one of the major themes, hopefully when we leave here, it will be noticed. Um, as was pointed out, October is Cancer Awareness Month, but today, October 13, is the day designated to bring awareness worldwide to metastatic breast cancer for which there is no cure. Those living with this disease would like to see funding increase for research because right now they only get 5% of overall breast cancer research. Uh, buildings and other structures are being lit up throughout the United States and in fact throughout the world. And you will notice that our city hall and police department are lit for this occasion. And I am proud that not only are we doing so, but the BF Goodrich Uniroyal folks down in North Carolina, which owns the Uniroyal Tire, enthusiastically agreed to participate. And the Uniroyal Tire is also lit in the three colors representing metastatic breast cancer, which is green, pink, and teal. So if you get a chance when you leave here, just take a quick ride up uh, Southfield go right on 94 and take a look. They are going to be doing a live stream there, I think at uh, about eight o'clock. Um, I also want to thank our neighboring community, Southgate, who responded immediately uh, to my invite to participate. And they are lighting their city hall, library, and the crosswalk bridge over Dix uh, Highway. Um, again, as I mentioned, there's a live feed from various locations that's going on at 8 p.m. We had um, postings on our Facebook page. There were some uh, cards that they dropped off in the um, lobby. I encourage people to visit their website and, if possible, perhaps make a donation. One of the reasons this came to my attention is that um, I know an individual who has been dealing with this for a number of years. Um, someone that I worked with, uh, played golf with, and occasionally had lunch with. And I would say there's probably not a braver group of people um, that I've ever met. I uh, really was not familiar with it until we got to talking about this. And um, I guess there's not much more to say Keep all of these individuals in your thoughts and prayers and do whatever you can to support them. And with that, I will take a motion to adjourn. Okay. Motion by Mr. Blevins, second by Mr. Lally. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned at 703.